How's it going? Hope you're doing good. Today we're reviewing the Apex 300 Blue Eddy. My first look at it to see what I think of it, see if it's any good, because their goal with this one is to build a whole home backup system that's modular so you could take it with you in the RV. So let's not waste any time, let's test it out and see if it's any good for RVers. So to start off, let's take a quick look at the specs. It'll give us a, a good idea of what this unit is about and what it's gonna be capable of, how we're going to test it. For starters, it has more than 30 amps out, at 3,840 watts, giving it a 32 amp out continuous. For capacity, it has 2,764.8 watt hours, making it equivalent to just over two 100 amp hour batteries. And with one expansion battery, it puts it at 5,530 watt hours, giving you 4.3 100 amp hour batteries for perspective. It has a 30 and a 50 amp outlet on the side for a 30 or a 50 amp RV. It has outlets for the front, basically has two separate circuits, two plugs each. For the DC or solar charging, it has two ports capable of 1200 watts each, giving it a total of 2400 watts capable for solar. Can be put into parallel using the hub A1, simple switches on the front for selecting 120 volts or 240 volts just out of one single unit. So the unit by itself, not paralleled with anything else, is capable of 240 volts. Also it has a simple switch of changing the charging profiles from silent, standard, or turbo. And the price at launch for the early bird special is $2,000 for this unit with the expansion battery. But as we get into testing this, I think it'll be important to let you know where I'm coming from so that way I'll give you perspective of what I'm looking at. I'm looking at this from the perspective of an RVer first and foremost. Second, they did send me this unit to test out, but I didn't accept any talking points. I told them I'm just going to do an honest review and tell you what I think. The third thing is my preference is the Victron system that we have on our RV. It's usually my first recommendation, but I, I know that not everybody's situation is the same or that they don't really want to dive into something that deep. This is a, a plug and play option that should work for RVing and be a home backup. So if you needed or wanted a, a home backup and still have something for the RV, but you only had a budget for one, then this might fit that bill. So let's get this plugged into the RV and test it out. I've actually been testing it for a while now. And there's really two things that really stood out to me that we'll unpack as we go. Now, something to mention here, the expansion batteries are easy to move around. The main unit itself is pretty hefty at 84 pounds. So something to consider if you're planning on moving it a lot. Now, typically you're gonna stack the unit on top of the battery, but since our RV is not a drop frame, we don't have a tall storage in this area. So I'm having to put them side by side. So something that I'm not a huge fan of is the cables that connect them because they stick out so far on the sides. And they do have an accessory where you can have a short cable that has 90 degree angle. So when you stack them, they don't take up space. But if I had those, I wouldn't be able to connect these side by side like I am now. So it's a pro and a con. Got it. And setup can't be any easier. I'm just gonna remove this out of the wet bay so I can bring the cord straight up through there and be able to plug the entire RV into the unit. No adapters or anything, but I am gonna plug that hole so critters don't come in. Now, the one thing about this is you will need a bond plug. This is just a plug you can plug into generators, power stations that don't have a neutral ground bond, which is usually provided by the shore power connection, but this does not have that. Now this isn't a deal breaker. This is pretty typical with a lot of generators that are out there. The difference is you don't plug your generator into the grid in order to charge it back up and you do with this. Yes, you could do it with solar, but oftentimes when you wanna charge it up fast, you're gonna plug it into the wall. And that's where you need to remember to unplug this when you go to charge that. You can't leave this plugged in all the time because there can only be one neutral ground bond and that's always gonna be at the main panel at the source. So when this is the source, plug it in. Like I said, not a deal breaker, but it's one more thing to remember when using this because it doesn't have it built in like the Victron does. And we won't use the bond plug when we use it as a home backup. But that was the fault that I was creating with that unit when we were testing out the surge protectors because it's just so easy to pull that plug and then the surge protector says, something's missing with your electrical that needs to be fixed. So uh, let's move on to the next phase of testing large RV loads like ACs. When I was testing the turbo, I was running two ACs off this unit at once. That was an off-grid test that I was doing. We were running two ACs and one of them didn't have a micro air easy start on it. So it was just starting that AC with no help. And the EcoFlow that I had out there couldn't hold up to that task, but this did. So we're gonna do two ACs and one heater to give it an extra load. 
Now, both ACs will be 15,000 BTUs, but also have micro air easy starts on them. So firing up the first one, we see it just over a thousand watts, which it obviously has no problem doing it. And then when we fire up the second one, we can see those watts jump up pretty quick. So now we're just under 3000 watts. So once we turn on that heater, we're getting up there to that 3,800 watts. I wanted to push it a little bit, so I turned on a few other things and got it up to 4,300 watts. You can see the warning that comes on there, bring it back down to 37, 3,800 watts. So it handled this test no problem. So here's what I found interesting on the settings that I had running all of that is because it has the 240 volt, 120 volt selector on there, I chose the 120 volt because when I tested it, you can see the voltage on line one, voltage on line two, but when you check between them, you have zero. So you have the full function of that inverter that's inside of there to the entirety of the RV. It's not gonna split it up line one and line two, it's just gonna send it to the entire RV. I make a point of that because if we were to use the 30 amp plug and use the 120 volt, we'd be limiting our wire size to that 30 amp wire, but we have a 50 amp wire, 50 amp RV. And so if we're going to be pulling 32 amps out of that, we're not worried about melting the wires on the RV. If the Blue Eddy trips, that's one thing, but we don't have to worry about any of our wires melting or any of our breakers tripping from that other than on the unit itself. I thought it was pretty interesting that they wired it up that way. When you select the 120, it didn't make that 50 amp receptacle null and void. It actually made it to where it was 120 volts only. So that was kind of cool. Now, if I had it on the 240 volt setting, it would limit me to 16 amps on each leg, which would make it harder to use the, the full capacity of this unit. Compared to a house where you might need 240 on the RV, 120 worked better in this situation. So I thought it'd be interesting to show you what it takes to install it on a house for backup and then the practicality of moving it to the RV for RV use. The one big thing that we do want for backup is for it to be able to run our well. So first thing I'm going to do is install a generator interlock kit. That way I can't have two sources of power trying to come in and I can't backfeed the main system if there was ever a power outage. There's multiple ways to be able to set it up. This one's pretty inexpensive and pretty simple. And then stacking these units, my first thought was to put them against the back wall and you can see just how much space is taken up by the, the wires connecting the batteries to the top, especially with the other cables that I needed to be able to put them in parallel. So I turned them and tucked them into the quarter, which is actually gonna take up less space. And these cables for putting them in parallel, I like them because they have that 90 degree angle on them, but they also lock in there. They have a mechanism that slides and twists into place, and then you have a screw that sets it in so that way it can't come unlocked. And those are gonna tie into the Blue Eddy Hub A1. And I'm mounting it too close to my other box that I put there, I'll slide it over eventually, but again, those cables connect from the Apex 300s to that hub on the wall. And I wanted to make sure to do some of the testing, seeing the pure sine wave, testing the voltages before I turned this unit on. And then I have a cable just like an RV where you connect it to the box and then to the hub. So it has a power button on the hub, turns on the power to be delivered from both units. And then it's just turning off the main breaker so that we can turn on the breaker from this system. So really not a whole lot on, but I realized that uh, if you open up the app, then you can see in here the cumulative between the two of them. Because if you look on one screen, that's only going to be half the load compared to the, the two of them. So really my main goal here is to be able to run the well when we lose power. So let's turn the water on. And spoiler alert, it ran the well. We actually put it through a bigger test on the RV than just running the well. So now a couple of things. One thing that I didn't install here yet and one thing that I didn't use on the RV. I'll, I'll explain why. This is the power cord for charging these up over here. I didn't put it in yet because I wanna find out if I can upsize this because I read that that is 50 amps in and out. So I wanted to see if I can wire that up so that I can charge this with more than just a uh, cable that I'm gonna plug into an outlet. So I'm gonna find out more on that, but this, is the DC side of everything for the RV. There's no DC outlets on these units. 
So this is where you're gonna have your USB, your USB-C, your 12 volt sockets on there. But on the top here is where we have the larger power out. This is gonna be 12 volt, 50 amps out with that Anderson plug. The reason why I didn't use this is because 50 amps really doesn't get us to where we need to be. If you're gonna be a camper van or something small that has no slides or leveling system, this would probably be fine to be able to do that and run this to a, a panel where you have all your fuses and goes to all your lights and everything inside the RV. But for us, I know that 50 amps won't be enough at 12 volts to be able to operate our slides and our leveling system. So if this is a system that you went with on your RV, just know that you would still have to have a battery on there in order to operate your, your slides and your landing gear and probably just keep it for your lights and everything. Just something to consider. But the entire install here went really quick and was really simple. And then from here, if you needed to transfer it back to the RV, you just need to disconnect the cables and heave it over to the RV. Now, something about the solar that kind of caught my eye on this unit is it's limited to 60 volts, which is somewhat constraining. Anytime you have a charge controller, you have your voltage and amperage that you can't go over. This is at 60 volts. Oftentimes we'll see 100, 150 volts, and it gives you the ability to wire up your panels in, in different ways. Just for example, if you take a 200 watt Renogy panel, you can see that that's gonna be over 30 volts. So if you try and put those together in series, you're gonna go over that 60 volt maximum. So you can't put them in series, but if you just put them in parallel, you're not gonna be able to get up to that uh, 1200 watts. Like I said, that's gonna be the same for any charge controller that's out there. Just the 60 is a little bit limiting in, in that factor. But overall, it's a very powerful, very capable unit that uh, did a good job. I don't have really any complaints about the, the way that it performed. And at the introductory rate, that early bird special for $2,000 for the, the head unit with that expandable battery, which is more battery capacity than really a handful of years ago that we couldn't even buy that much battery capacity for lithium. Now all this is packed into one unit, especially that it has the selector between 240 and 120 and it makes it so easy. that It makes it a viable option for home backup and bringing it in the RV and the way that it handles it internally makes it work really well for RVing. Just like the comment that I had this last week from Solarize Your Life, he said, buy a portable power station and it'll be a lot cleaner setup, plug and play. And that's exactly what this unit does. You put it in, you plug your RV in and you use it. Maybe we'll do another video where we compare something like this to the Victron system, the pros and cons, and why you would choose one over the other. That said, this is a pretty simple setup. So links will be down in the description for this unit, for the expansion battery, even for that little neutral ground bond plug if you needed one for a generator or another system. But I think that's gonna do it for today. I hope this helped you out. I hope that it helped you make a decision and see what's out there and available for RVing. So as always, if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you next video. Take care.